afternoon. Meteorologist Rob Nucatola is in Cocoa Beach now, and surfing is a popular ha habit for sure for people there. Rob, have you seen many surfers braving this storm? Well, there was one or two clowns out here a little earlier ago, but the winds have really started picking up in the last 15, 20 minutes. Remember that lull we were talking about at 530? It's gone. The skies have gotten real dark. I wouldn't say it's raining super hard right now, but the rain, the way it's blowing, it feels like being hit with little tiny pebbles. Now, as far as this wind goes, before it was not 25 to 35 mile per hour range sustained. Now it's up over 40. It's hard to stand up. I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but it's a little hard to stay upright right now. The wind is kind of pushing and the skies are getting darker. This is going to be one of those little squall lines with one of those one of those bands. There will be many, many more. And if you take a look out at the beach, you can see some of the sand blowing across the beach. So uh, the erosion is beginning and there's going to be a lot more of it as we go through tonight and into tomorrow. We are still many, many miles away from the core of this storm. And that is a really important distinction. This is hundreds of miles away from where all the worst of the weather is. And it's kind of nasty out here now, and I think at some point it's going to get worse, not better. Hopefully, as we go through the next 36 hours, this storm will stay farther out to sea and not spread more of what I'm seeing here in Cocoa Beach, more inland guys. Good morning. He joins us live from Daytona Beach. And Rob, uh, how's it looking out there at this moment? Well, it was looking a little bit better about 15, 20 minutes ago, and now the rain is coming down, and it's that wind-driven rain. We're at the Daytona International Speedway. We came here for a lot of reasons, one being there was really good lighting around the area, and you'd be able to see what's going on. But about 15 minutes ago, I think one of the transformers over the speedway blew. There was a big blue flash in the sky, and a lot of the lighting in the background just kind of went out, and there was a big staticky sound over some of the speakers here. Now, if we take a look, you can see the palm trees. They're moving pretty good right now, but... It's not nearly as windy here as it was when we were in Cocoa Beach yesterday. And then out there on International Speedway Boulevard, which is usually a pretty busy road, when we got here last night, 7.30, 8 o'clock, it was a ghost town. Even the 7-Eleven was closed. I mean, everything boarded up and people are out of town. So uh, I think people are definitely heeding the advice to get someplace where it's likely to be more safe. I spoke to a security guard here at the Speedway earlier this morning, and he said that the police and emergency services crews are asking the news crews to get away from the intercoastal and get away from the beaches because it's not completely safe there either. Lots to watch with this storm that looks like it wants to parallel the coast, which is great news for back home in our area. It's still about four or five hours away from being close to Daytona, so the weather here, it's going to get worse, not better. We've been seeing these squalls, these bands, all night long. You get a half hour where it rains really hard. You get a couple of minutes where the winds are blowing incredibly hard. But again, yesterday on the beach, when we were out there in Cocoa, it was easily sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. Right now, we might have some gusts at that high, but I don't think the sustained winds are anywhere near as high as we felt earlier. Now, I'll expect that to change over the next couple of hours as the storm continues to work its way north and carve out quite a path. But as long as it keeps offshore like it is, that's great news for our area, and that's better news for much of the Florida Atlantic coast. We'll keep bringing you updates from here throughout the morning. Right now, back to you guys. Well, Rob Nugatola spent the early morning in Daytona and is now in Gainesville. Uh, Rob, what can you tell us about conditions so far and what you saw as you got out of Daytona? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Apparently, just as you throw it to me is when the winds really want to start picking up here in Gainesville. I was talking about how nice it was here compared to just 50 miles east of here. And when we were leaving Daytona this morning, the wind gusts were probably 50 miles per hour and more. It was blowing me around. It took us two hours and change and had to drive 70 miles. We had to turn around two or three times because of downed power. Glad we were able to do that while we could. The weather conditions here in Gainesville, they were a lot nicer about an hour ago, but we're catching one of those bands here right now. So uh, we're getting our fair share even in Gainesville, guys. We know that you're getting ready to head out towards Lake City for our evening shows. Absolutely. We'll see what the extreme eastern part of our area is like as the storm makes its way farther to the north. We always figure the times that our eastern sections would have the best chance to get some of these effects would have been tonight. So we'll be there tonight to see just in case those areas are getting some effects. Although, if everything keeps going the way it's going, hopefully those effects will be much less than we're seeing even now in Gainesville, guys.